Hello, welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I am Stevie B. So this video is kind of being made on the fly. This is the follow-up video to the video from the other day about the new mission on DSEC-9 to get the extended speed body armor suit where we have to protect the shrine. So you get the mission from Shadow Dragon and I said you have to have five people in order to start the mission. So you need to get to tier three in contributing in order to be able to get the crystal that you have to turn into shadow. So I actually had to wait uh, quite a bit. I waited yesterday. I bounced in and out. I was here. I was at the Monria hub a few times. And luckily I literally just got home from work and I log in and I'm in the middle of the, of the event. So you have to have five people to come to the shrine in order to get this event started. And as you can see, these creatures are level 40, level 50, shared loot. Not the easiest things in the world to take down, uh, by any means. And I'm running out of ammo, so I'm going to have to go get more ammo. So I'm going to run to go grab more ammo real quick. But needless to say, uh, I got lucky. I came, I jumped in. And literally, I logged in, and everybody was just there. It was just off and popping. So I got lucky on that. I had tried to organize a couple of people yesterday at the Monria Hub, and nobody really responded. But having to have five people to start the dynamic event is kind of a little bit of a problem, especially if you're traveling by yourself through space. Um, that, that can be a little bit of a cluster, because then you end up in the mess that I was in, where I just kind of had to get lucky and wait for everybody to show up. Now, luckily, like I said, I got home from work, and I logged in, and I was just in the middle of it, and I immediately died. I didn't have any armor on. I had no idea what level these creatures were. I figured it would be fairly decently high level. I didn't think it would be level 40 slash 50, but with a group of five, that makes more sense. If they were all level five creatures, then, you know, a group of five wouldn't really be super, super, super necessary. So here's one of the things about this event that you guys might want to keep in mind. So you have to get to tier 3 in order to get the crystal to turn into Shadow Dragon. So as you can see, you've got your contribution up here. You can see what phase you're on and everything. And obviously it would be fairly easy for some people to go past tier 3. Uh, I'm currently on tier 1, almost done with tier 1. And I'm using my BC60. Just to give you an idea of what I'm using. Yes, it does have an amp on it. Yes, the amp is appropriate. Yerda, 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 all that. Um, so that being said, what you want to do is you really don't want to go past Tier 3. It's really not fair to everybody else that's in the group. If you can get past Tier 3, then obviously the polite thing to do is just provide support. Now, by provide support, I mean you want to do some fapping. You want to repair the shrine. As you can see, the shrine actually has its own little thing above it. Um, so it can actually be decayed and it can be destroyed just like it, a vehicle could or a mothership could. So you want to have a repair tool on you when you come to do this. So once you've reached tier 3, ideally you just want to run around healing other players as they are getting to tier 3. And being sure and protecting the shrine also. That's kind of super duper important because obviously if the shrine is destroyed, then that's all bad for everybody and you have to go in and try and repair the shrine and it's just no good so obviously if you can make it happen right off the bat by just getting to tier three and then healing other players and keeping the shrine from being totally decayed it, you're better off so that being said this is kind of what it looks like and ideally you want to do kind of what we're doing here where everybody's just kind of staying back from the mob cluster obviously the cluster is over there with them being high level, you don't want to aggravate them all at the exact same time. So if you can get one guy to shoot or one person to shoot and kind of draw them in or tag them in and then draw them away from the group, you can see on my radar, I'll drag my radar over here, there's quite a few. So obviously if you can get somebody to be essentially a tagger, you'll be doing good. That way you can kind of pull them to you. See, there's quite a few red dots over there. So luckily I had my ghost armor on me. And I just threw my ghost armor on, my reload horns, 
and just went to town. Luckily, I had the B BC-60 on me. Now, you don't have to use that big of a weapon, but remember, you're trying to get to Tier 3 of contributing. Well, I'm currently at Tier 2, and this is Reclaim the Shrine. So, it looks like the shrine was probably destroyed before I got here. So, I'm not sure exactly what all you have to go through to reclaim it. Okay, cult leaders have been killed. We've got another guy inbound. So, I'm just going to go ahead and let this play out as I go through the process here. I, and like I said, I didn't catch this from the very beginning. I didn't catch it from the start. I logged in as soon as I walked in the door and literally instantly died because <laughs> I wasn't wearing any armor or anything. They were already going at it. Somebody already had a group. So I just kind of had to start rocking and rolling and then just kind of roll with it and get the recording going. Everybody's kind of standing around waiting for somebody to shoot. There we go. There's one. Uh, luckily with the BCs and the LRs you've got a little bit of a range here where you can pull them from you don't have to get super close I wish I could have got it from the second that they actually started the event because then we could have seen the entire thing I'm pretty sure the shrines already been destroyed which is why we're on reclaim the shrine because it's supposed to be defend the shrine so I'm pretty sure it started off as defend the shrine and then it moved to reclaim the shrine. And see, that's why you don't want to do too many at once. Because then you end up with this exact problem. Now we've got three of them inbound. There we go. And yes, I'm using the EIR MK1 from Next Island. I'm kind of liking this FAP. I re really am. Obviously, my Vivo S10 was just not cutting it anymore. Not even close. Hold on one second, guys. My Vivo S10 was just not cutting it anymore, so this has way better healing capacity. I'm also still in Sib on it, which is great. I don't usually like Sib, but when it comes to FAPs, I'll deal with it. And it's got that reload speed buff. Now, by the time you actually use the FAP and then actually get to the point where you've got the buff still activated, you've actually only got like 4 to 6 seconds of reload speed. Not the full 10, I think it is. But it's still a great FAP. I'm loving it. I got it it was decently marked up for what all you have to do to get the blueprint and what all you have to do to actually go through and make it so i didn't actually craft this one this one i just bought funny thing is i left all my ammo and storage up on monry obviously i don't have time to jump up to monry and then come all the way back to larch's green in dsec 9 <laughs> so i just ran to the tt because there's actually a tt right inside the larch's green pub which is obviously right next to where you get this mission from Shatter Dragon. So I just ran in there and grabbed some ammo real quick. And almost tier 3. And as you can see, like this is phase 1 of 2. We've got an hour 17 something to do it in. So I'm not necessarily worried about us getting it done. With as many people as are here and with the weapons we're using as fast as we're going through this, we're going to get it done in plenty of time. I'm more curious to see what happens when I hit Tier 3 to see if it actually pops up over here in like my inventory or, or how that goes. Or if it says mission updated or whatnot. Yeah, somebody's using a laser rifle because they've got about a third more range than I do. Which makes sense as the laser rifles for Armatrix usually have about a third more range than the BC line. I 
I'm shooting a little bit slower than normal. That's because I'm wearing the Easter 22 ring, which has the improved accuracy versus my reload ring, my Aries. And it looks like, with Reclaim the Shrine, it looks like we've got to just kill all the cultists that are here, which is quite a few. So all those red dots. But again, you don't want to get them all coming inbound at once. That would be no good. Haven't hit a global yet, which seems odd for a dynamic event. With this many people here. Sorry, my dog's trying to eat some hot tamales. That's no good. She's getting jealous that I'm having all the fun and she's not getting to play. She loves to play Entropia. I taught her to hit the F thing with her little paw. So cute. She loves to run mayhem. And it looks like she had a Rice Krispie treat while she was at it. And, okay, so I'm at Tier 3. It didn't say mission updated or anything. Okay, so Marcus is not there yet. A couple of people, I think, just showed up. See, that's why I'm asking you over here in the chat. Looks like everybody's tier three. So I guess we'll just go ahead and finish this out. And you can see now words getting out now more people are showing up but if you're coming here and you're having a problem getting the mission started because you don't have a large enough group what I did is I literally just hung out here and I just would log in every couple hours and if there were people here cool which hadn't happened until just this morning if not I would just log back out and I'd log back in in a couple more hours if you can see a health bar over the shrine that's a pretty good indication that you missed it because that health bar is not going to be over the shrine if the event hasn't happened recently it's like a repair bar just like your typical health bar like you would see on a mothership or something so if that is over the shrine then you have probably missed the event and there is a cooldown period I don't know what it is it's a couple hours I think so you might have to wait till the next one. But if you can pop in and get lucky like I did, I think I had to try it a total of four times. I think it was the fourth time I popped in, there were people here. That was the one I just did, and I literally just threw on my recording software. Hey, there we go. There's the swirl we needed. 87 ped of shrapnel. Nice. 489 ped total. Very nice. About time. I knew we'd get a, a global somewhere in there, or a Hoff.
So now it looks like we just got finished killing them. And we're at like 98% it seems. And then we should get the crystal. Okay, well that's phase one. Oh, no, nope, now we still got to kill more cultists. Now they're going to be spawning back up. Back up, people. So now we got to do phase two. So we'll knock out phase two real quick. And these are obviously harder hitting. Uh, you're looking at level 65s here. Yeah, these are level 65s. Which is why everybody's dying left and right. Obviously much higher level. So we've got to pull them further back. Uh, this is going to be a problem because they're not pulling one at a time. See, they're pulling them all at the same time. You can't do that. Not when it goes from level 40 to level 60. So, phase 2 is apparently the hard part. Because phase 2, they jump up to level 65-ish. And I think this is why the reclaim the shrine part is so much harder. If they don't get these stupid things away from here, they're going to screw this all up. Okay, okay so that's the exact problem with group play and dynamic events. Obviously, the level jumps quite substantially from level 40 which is already a fairly decent level that's fairly mid-level to level 65 and what do they do they immediately aggravate like five or six and they pull them all right over to the revive terminal you can't pull them right over to the revive terminal because guess what's going to happen every time somebody revives they're going to start trying to kill the people at the revive terminal so you have to not do that <laughs> Which, they're finally figuring that out. Notice that they finally split it off. And luckily, with the way the event's set up, you know, luckily, we're not, like, outside an event area or something. Because that would be all super bad. Okay, finally, everybody's kind of regrouped. But obviously you see what a disaster that was. So yeah, whatever you do, if you are doing the reclaim the shrine, which, like I said, I'm assuming the shrine was already destroyed before I even got here. Once you get to phase two, they jump up to level 60-ish pretty as soon as level uh, phase two starts. So when phase two starts, you've got to back up, only be sure that the group draws one at a time, don't do more than one at a time and whatever you do sure don't do what we just did and get like six or seven and keep them away from that stupid revive scarecrow 
that's what that scarecrow was when I made the first video on Larch's Green. I was talking about the playground. I was like, oh, that's cool. They got a little scarecrow. Well, it's a revive terminal. What's weird is it doesn't show up on, as on the map as a revive terminal. There's no orange dot. However, if you're actually doing the event, it acts as a revive terminal. So it's not normally a revive terminal. Normally, the revive terminal is inside the pub, which is another 20, 30 meters back behind you. However, if you're doing the actual shrine mission, then it is revive terminal. So that's kind of interesting. I've never seen a mechanic like that in game before, at least not that I can think of offhand, where it doesn't act like a terminal that pulls, or it doesn't act like a terminal unless you're doing a certain thing. I mean, I guess there might be another example of it, but I'm not thinking of one offhand. Okay, now we've got a rhythm going. And as you can see, you don't have to kill all the cultists. You just need to kill enough to get the contribution done before the time runs out, which hour and a half, we've got plenty of time. So this really should not be a problem. The only thing I don't like about what we're doing here with this group is they keep running a little bit too far ahead. These are going to respawn in this area here at some point. Not all of them, but they will respawn. And one thing that I do not like about the reload fap from Next Island is you can't just use it once. If you use it once because of the way the reload buff works, it almost instantly gives you a second use. Which, I, nothing wrong with that because if you need to pull it out and use it, you've probably got enough damage that you're taking that two heals isn't going to hurt you. It's just going to help you. But it does kind of mess with switching your weapons out. It does kind of mess with the amount of time you get to use the reload buff. You also have to take that into account from a decay standpoint because you're essentially going to be using twice as much decay as you would think. But you're getting double the amount of healing. So, I mean, you know, just got to kind of factor that in. I always look at it as using the EIR MK1 with the reload buff from Next Island. I just figure anytime I'm going to use it, I'm going to get two heals out of it and a reload buff that's going to last roughly six seconds. Pixie, stop it. Sorry, she's over there messing with the couch. She's not normally like this when I get home. Usually when I get home, she's pretty chill. Like, she's happy to see me for a second. And then usually she's pretty laid back. See that one just respawned right there? And we've got another one incoming because that one just respawned. So now we're getting to the point where they're starting to respawn, which two is not bad. We can kind of handle two. But when you get to where you're dealing with, you know, seven, seven's an issue. And luckily, if he's kind of jumping around, which again, good that this event has five players required to, to start it, So I know this is going to be a little bit longer video than I usually make, but we're going to go through the event all the way that we can we can go back over to Shadow. And when we get back to Shadow, we can actually complete the mission, get the bodysuit, and go from there. Wow, that's a lot of random loot. What's he shooting at?
Yeah, the BP-20 is not going to do me a lot of good right here. I do have other videos that I plan on making here on Monria. Uh, some on DSEC-9, some around the Lotus type stuff. I especially want to look at the Lotus instances. I was talking to somebody about that yesterday. A big thing that's kind of going on right now is just everybody's kind of in this lag because they pulled the rug out from underneath us with Summer Mayhem being cancelled. So because of that, there was a lot of people that geared up for Summer Mayhem that said, well, we're just not going to do anything until Halloween Mayhem. I, w I was pretty much one of the people in that group. And that's why I boycotted... Uh, summer migration and I just had a lot of stuff going on in real life I've still got a lot of stuff going on in real life the nightmare is not yet over uh, the saga continues however things have changed pretty drastically in the past four days and it's going to continue changing it's going to get worse before it gets better but I see better being on the horizon of course I kind of guess it depends on how you define better um, that being said uh, you know, it, for me, life just interfered over the past six, seven months pretty massively, which is why there were some months that I really didn't even pump out videos. I really didn't even log into the game to do anything other than pay withdrawals, and I would try and bang out a few videos for Next Island for the Ascension thing and just to kind of give you guys some content to keep you going. But real life has just interfered so much. It's been really hard for me to do much of anything. So that being the case, um, that's been a problem for me. I know there's a lot of other people, they've had stuff going on in real life with Summer Mayhem getting pulled out from under us like that. I know a lot of people were just waiting for Halloween Mayhem and boycotting migration. A lot of people did migration and then decided not to do anything else. And it's just a, a combination of things between events that were going on, events that were canceled, and real life that have taken players away from doing a lot of things I think players would normally want to do if we could look at it without all those externalities involved. So I think there's stuff like uh, Lotus Temple and like the, the Lotus instances and stuff like that, Seahoff, stuff like that on Taloon that I think more players would have done or would be doing if not for these other externalities, whether it, the externality is real life getting in the way. I've heard that from several people lately, several players who usually never have a problem with life getting in the way. Uh, whether the externality is they're trying to prepare for Halloween mayhem, which is one of the things that I'm trying to do at the moment. Whether the externality is that just summer mayhem getting canceled kind of caught them off guard and kind of screwed everything up for them. Or whether the externality is they did a lot at migration and now they've just got to kind of step back for a second. Whatever it is, there's just been a lot going on for a lot of players lately and there are things that do suffer like Lotus instances like CU Hoff a lot of stuff that takes a lot of time and effort uh, people going for the uh, Silver Crown of Safar Sah Sah Sahar however you say it which is a massive mission chain that's a crossover between DSEC 9 and Taloon that's one of the ones that I've been working on. I could not get that stupid laptop upgrade to drop the other day. I tried for about two hours, and I haven't really got a chance to try lately, but I did try the other day for a little bit. And I'm just going to shoot till this gun burns out, because this gun's going to burn out on me pretty quick. We're really not going to have a problem getting to the end. I mean, we're already 68% of the way through. Hour and 16 minutes left. We, we, we'll be fine. We'll be done in, you know, 5, 10 minutes or so. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and actually cut the video here. And then I'll just do a part 2 when we get to the very, very end. So, for now, sip, sip, smack, smack. And the cough, cough seems to be gone. So, you know what to do with the haters. Head over to earnped.com because when you earn, we earn. That's by far the best way you guys can help support us. Also be sure and hit that subscribe and that like button because obviously whenever you subscribe to the channel, it helps us out. It gets us a bigger reach, bigger audience. And also when you like the video, it does the same thing. But the more important part is there's always one of our haters out there. I swear the moment I upload a video, they are literally sitting around waiting to hit the dislike button. So I'm going to leave it there for now and I'll be back with part two here in a moment 
where we actually complete this and finish up the shrine thing and go get the bodysuit from Shadow.